Team Daniel coming to you for a new video <laughs> about <laughs> about when talk is cheap, when it's not, and how to make big decisions. But before we do, we'll help you make a small decision, and that is to get a Rob Ross calendar and a t-shirt because she's helping us put that together this year. And then if you know they haven't from the past, it's great to be with the Rob Ross every day of the year. <laughs> and they're pretty awesome. Um, now, on to the subject of the video, which is why is it okay for us to talk about our dreams and nightmares, but not okay to admit our thoughts while we're awake? Daydreaming. So. And who's to say that dreaming at night is not closer to reality than what happens when we're awake? But let's just pretend it is. That being said, why is it if I have my lovely wife here and I tell her at nighttime, I'm like, man, I had this crazy dream that this girl, these hookers came up to me and they <laughs> just did all kinds of nasty things. And look, see how she reacts? It's kind of funny. But if I was at checking out to uh, get a root beer at an ice cream shop and the cashier happens to have some tempting lips and I tell Diana, man, like, I saw that girl checking me out, you know, checking me out money wise, really like buying ice cream. <laughs> and I had this thought of her bleep. And then Diana's gonna be all like whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this monkey business about? <laughs> And she has this, I would have, I would beg to say that most women in that situation, are, do you think when most would get pretty fed up and like, oh my gosh? Yeah. No. Yeah. I would say so. I would like you to consider that talking about those things is extremely important because what you resist has a tendency to persist. And... The fact of the matter is that guys, because media, culture, our primal instinct, we're inevitably wired to think about sexual thoughts a lot. And this doesn't only go for sexual thoughts, it might go for violent thoughts. It might go for anything that you don't want to do. Anything that you don't want to do, I would encourage you to find a partner and find someone that's willing to go there with you. Because I think the more likely I am to admit to Diana the thought, these little micro thoughts that I have no intention of doing, the less likely that I will actually do them. And plus, when I say everything that's on my mind, I have nothing to remember, and it's a way of holding myself accountable. If I'm going to admit everything that I'm going to do to Diana, or you know that I'm doing in my life to Diana, then that kind of holds me accountable because I don't really want to do anything <laughs> that I would not feel comfortable telling her. So it's, a, uh, it's almost a way for God to be your judge, in my opinion. And we were using this example before in a previous video that your words are merely a window to your imagination. While your attention, while your actions, basically, are a window to your attention, which is a window to your intention. And that is who you actually are. So I'm begging Diana and everyone else to judge me based on my actions and not what necessarily I think or say. Because I don't even think we can be held responsible completely for what we think. There are tricks through meditation or yoga or, you know, just surrounding yourself with positive people, positive images that you'll think better. But still, it's inevitable. Like, for instance, if I told Diana, not for you not to think about boobies, milk sacks, tatas, jugs, lactating nipples, um, don't think about boobs, don't think about boobs, don't think about boobs. What are you going to be thinking about? Boobies. Can't help it. Yeah. So should I judge Diana? Should I condemn her for thinking about boobs? No. Should I condemn her for playing with another woman's boobs? Well, that's a tricky one. Let's think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you get my point. But you got to judge people on their actions. And uh, the funny flip side to this is the things that, you're, that you really want to do say your goals, your dreams, your desires, places you want to visit, risk that you might have to take to get there. I actually I actually am potentially persuading you to not talk about them. 
Because once again, just like the more I talk about my thoughts of me, you know, doing something wrong mm -hmm. or something behind your back, the less likely it kind of gives me that freedom. It's like, oh shoot, okay, like she didn't react that bad. Like now we can just talk about it. Hey, it's Diana. Had this, and a lot of times when I admit that, don't you? What happens? We find out. And I had the same thought. That she had a very similar thought about something else. We kind of find out that you may have heard us use this phrase that we took from Perzon, who probably took it from someone else's, that it's what's most personal is most universal. And that we all just look a little different to tell each other apart. Where really there's universal like oneness. And that we're all persuaded by the same and influenced by the same cultural, media, instinctual things. And we can share this empathetic connection rather than hiding it. Because when we reveal more, we have less to hide. And when we have less to hide, we're less worried about being found out. And when that happens, we can pay better attention to each other and create a more intimate relationship. That was kind of like a broken up quote from uh, Brad Blanton there, who wrote the book Radical Honesty. Great read, recommend it. Um, now, what I was getting to, I know I'm, my stream of consciousness can be kind of uh, ping-ponging every once in a while. Are you following me so far, Diana? This is one of the reasons here. Not only to give me more credible by having a beautiful woman in my lap, because I know you're going to listen when she's here, but also to help me stay on track. Did I stay on track so far? I don't think so. You just talk so much. <laughs> Paradoxically. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm talking more so you can talk less. <laughs> now, back to those dreams, goals, desires the bigger picture things, I would actually persuade you to talk less because I think sometimes, let's use the traveling for example, we're, we're a good, this is a good, we're a good people to use this example because we run these retreats and we get hundreds of emails and we've taken over hundreds of people to different places, or hosted over hundreds of people around the world in different places ranging from Kauai to Costa Rica to Washington, girls from Denmark. Our next trip is actually Nicaragua January 3rd to the 9th. Uh, Jake Ducey's going to be there. Oh, I'm going into another tangent. <laughs> Jake Ducey, summer training camp from our last video is going to be there. We got a, a large crew of cool people. But this is the example I was getting at to begin with. That when someone wants to come on our trip, the, there's an amazing correlation between the longer and more persuasive the email is how much they want to come, the less likely they're going to come. And the people that write the shorter emails that get straight to logistical business, the more likely they're going to come. And that is a testimony in itself right there that I think, I mean, it really, it makes me question some things like, heck, if I could satisfy that, that desire to travel by just talking about it, it's not a bad bet. I don't think that's what life is all about. And I don't think it's as fulfilling, but heck, when you just talk about it, you get the same sort of, you get a fraction of fulfillment without the trap, without the uh, risk of travel without passports, without finances, without missing work, without even leaving your home. So if you're really thinking about cheating on your partner, maybe you should experiment with telling her, or maybe you're just doing something wrong, you should find another partner. No, that's the most important advice of this whole video, is what she just said. That's why I have her here. If you are considering cheating on your partner, like seriously considering it, or you've been tempted, please go tell them right now. Please admit that to them right now. And if you already have, then I would still admit it, although that might take a little bit more work, I would recommend coming on one of our retreats if you need to get over that hump yeah. with her <laughs> or him. <laughs> our relationships are all about relationships, and that's another reason I have the lovely Diana here. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard. Sometimes I get mad. It's like, really? You have that thought? What's wrong with you? But then I just, I started thinking about something very similar, and it's like, I realized that Man, that's kind of stupid. It's just a thought. It's not really actions. Though yeah. I do get mad. I think girls just get mad about stuff. Like yeah, that well, sometimes. it's going to be happening. Why don't you? I mean, there's a wholeness and a realness to that. That there's a comfort you have have probably around me because you know that I'm a freaking unfiltered. Yeah. One thing I like about this whole honesty thing too is that, like in my past with ex-boyfriends, whenever I would ask them something and they would give me an answer, I was like. Yeah, right, you're bullshitting me right now. But with Daniel, I know that if there's something I really want to know, I know that I'm going to get a true answer. So I'm never really concerned. Like, it's so liberating. I can just ask and I really never have to worry about anything because I know it's the truth. I mean, if I mean, he'll go down a yeah. black hole if <laughs> he tries to keep anything a secret. So, to <laughs> summarize well, and to reiterate what we're saying, the things that are not... The things that you, you you least want to reveal. Oh, here it is. I got it. The things that you want to reveal less, 
reveal more of those. Reveal all of those. The things that you really want to reveal and really want to share, especially if it comes to like a goal, try not sharing that. And if you are going to share, try to be very simple about it. Not like, I'm going to go on a Rob Ross retreat because I've needed this from the day I was born. I haven't been connected to anyone. Like, I live in this cold environment and the fruit's so bad. And I can't wait to go down to Nicaragua and eat all these wonderful fruits and go surfing and go train with you in summer and Jake and do the whole workshop and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, it's like they went on the trip. And they <laughs> it's just, true. And, and try, instead of trying, like, I'm going to Rob Ross retreat or whatever your goal is. And then the same, this same principle goes for making decision, decisions in your life. And this is basically kind of a summary of the book Blink from Malcolm Gladwell, which is a great read. But at the end of the book, his basic le his lesson was, a thesis was, that for the biggest decisions in your life, like who you're going to marry, what's your career going to be, what job or what a school you're going to, don't think too much. Don't think too hard. Because a lot of times that overthinking paralysis analysis can block your intuitive divine intelligence that you were born with. The snap judgment. And I think it kind of can block with your heart. Your mind starts taking over the power of your heart. Now, on, in the other lesson in the book was the smaller decisions like which, uh, which Rob Rob am I going to date? Timothy or Nathaniel or... No, that's a bad one. <laughs> what? I'm always trying to connect with the Rob Ross like some subliminal advertising. I was actually thinking about something completely <laughs> different. So I was thinking that. What were you thinking about? I was thinking about this is sweet. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be bad. Well, I was just thinking last time we did this video thing, like right here, we weren't uh, married. I was uh, thinking about how much I love you. I, you look, almost look bashful. <laughs> I'm happy you brought that up because marrying Diana was uh, one of those huge decisions. And I kept rationalizing reasons not to do it. Like, oh, I can just let her do this. But do this. I kept thinking, thinking, thinking. But in my heart, I had a feeling. I was like, oh, I'm just, this is it. This is it. So I tried to stop thinking and I just did it. And I'm very happy with my decision. I, I, yeah, yeah. That's oh, a whole other. Tell that story. That's another whole video. But, um,. For the smaller decisions, that's the ones you can overthink. Like, for instance, if you're at a menu at a restaurant and you want to... Those are just fun things to think about, just like the things to talk about. Like, it's fun. I had a little micro thought about cheating on Diana. And those are just fun. And those are things not to take serious, but to laugh at. Not that I planned on cheating on her, but it just happened. A beautiful woman walked in front of me and I checked her out and she checked me out and I was like, bite him. And then I could talk to Diana about that and overcome that. I but if I... Never I, I just made up one. Oh. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> but if I, if I uh, resist that, it could persist. If I'm like, oh, I can never tell Diana about all these women I'm seeing. Oh, like, oh, I can never, I can never, I can never, I can never do that. All of a sudden, the opportunity happens. You're like, oh, I'll just do it and I'll never tell her about it. But, did, did that make sense? Mm -hmm. The small decisions and the things you don't want to reveal, think about, uh, oh gosh, all right. This, <laughs> this, is, this is tough to wrap your head around. You got this, guys. You got it. You got it. Are you there? So this makes sense. If this all made sense to you, or if it made 50% sense to you, leave me a uh, code word below in the comment called Sylvester Stallone. And like the video and share it while you're at it. But Sylvester Stallone, that means you're on the same page. Actually, that's too hard to spell. Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Just comment with a stone below. Yeah. You really need a Rob Ross retreat for this. Yeah. He's so it, advanced. <laughs> It's so, that's like the paradox of life. It's so advanced yet so simple. simple. So the things you don't want to reveal, reveal more of them. The things that you really want to do in your life, consider holding them back or summarizing them in very few words. The big decisions in life, you already have the answer. The smaller decisions in life, go ahead and entertain yourself. Think about them a lot. There you go. Did we really get the point across? That's a wrap. Did I? What do you think? I was make I was gonna make a little blog about it, but it started getting a little <laughs> confusing. And you thought making a video about it would be easier, but I'm really not sure now. <laughs> I did want to quote about uh, Tim Ferriss: "Is tomorrow is a disease that will take your dreams to the grave with you." So, in my in my words, consider <laughs> the less. <laughs> this, there's also a lot of rhyming words that makes it confusing. The less you talk, the walk the more you will walk the talk. Talk less, do more, read less, write more, watch less, make more, dream less, and live more.
I realize I must look like really spacey and high because I'm like looking around. But there's so many pictures and stuff on the walls around here that I'm like so distracted. I don't think being around me uh, helps anyone be less distracted. No. I'm like a. I can't I can't keep like up a, with that sometimes. I'm like a pinball wizard. <laughs> She's gonna make it. <laughs> All right, yeah. If you want the calendar, the T-shirt, robbraz at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.